Well, at least this basic thing that we're doing is gonna work, I'm pretty sure. Good thing I didn't bother to try something more complicated. Actually, now that I think about it, we haven't tested long distance redstone signals yet. Which maybe I should. Like, we should test how far the signal travels. Hmm. We can do that relatively easily, right? So let's find some animals and see how far away before they... they disappear, and then let me just put a... piston. Alright, so... Let's say we start... Okay, so the llama... The llama is kind of there, right? Right, it's kind of there. Let me step back until he disappears. Like... There. Let me step back a little bit more. And let's say I put a piston there. Put a block there. Um, we also need redstone repeater. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll just put repeaters there. One, two, three, four, ten. Repeater. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, just need to make sure. that well I wanna see anyway I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to do. I wanna make sure that this will activate the other piston. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, so if I put that there that's on. Now remove it, that's off. The piston does not update. The piston does not update. Okay, let me just make sure. So if I put that on, and I follow it, the piston updates. That's not a very long, that's a very short distance. Like, how many blocks is that? That is a rather short distance. So we need to we need to pass the signal forward along with the minecart is what that means. And in fact, we need a lot of these. I thought they would be further away than this. I thought it would be uh it would be the the how many loaded chunks whatever it is. But it's not. It's actually a really short distance. So if I just do that and then do that the the piston does not does not do anything. Wow. What is that? 1 2 3 4 Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's less than a hundred blocks. 
Or maybe it's exactly a hundred blocks, like if I put that there. Alright, that's too that's too far. If I put that there, that's still too far, wow. Put that there. You have got to be kidding me. What is it, 64 blocks? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's 64 blocks, isn't it? So if your redstone machine is bigger than 64 blocks, it just doesn't work? Wow. Wow, this is wow. But it's so small. <laughs> it's, it's so small. It means that every 60... No, because we need to pass forward and pass back. It's not just... Oh wow, this is going to be a lot more complex than I thought. There's going to be a lot more mechanisms than I thought. Because I mean, I, I I knew that we would have to pass the signal forward alongside the minecart. I didn't realize that we have to do it this frequently. Just looking at the screen right now, like that, that is the distance from like uh, from there to there, we need to pass the signals every 64 blocks. Um, so when you when you reach that point, it needs to pass the signal forward to the next one, and it also needs to reset the one behind. And then when you get to there, it should pass the signal to the next one, and it should reset the. Actually, no, it should reset. It should pass the signal and reset this one, not the one behind. So, as you travel to there, you pass a signal to the next one and then you reset the previous one. And you pass the signal to the next one, reset that one. Um, I guess you would do the pass forward actually in the middle. Or a little forward, I guess. The, the the train will also be I mean if the train was sitting still you could you should, you could pass forward from sixty four that way to sixty four that way and then reset that one. You could do that. But because the train is moving forward at speed, we can't we can't do it at max distance is what I'm thinking. Well maybe it's not that. Maybe it's actually more than sixty four. Because the switch could be like the switch to pass the signal forward could be there, and it could actually the mechanism could be back there, and it will manage to pass forward to there across 128 blocks at maximum, and then uh. And then the next one, the switch would be like in the middle between the uh, 128 again. Um, let me write this down. Let me write this down before I forget, in case I forget. Um, let's see, redstone, redstone, uh, active radius is uh, probably 64 blocks um, therefore max distance to pass forward signal is 128 blocks 
uh, trigger in the middle. Hmm. So if if you don't know what I'm doing here, this might not make any sense to you. But um, be like because we need we need signals to switch between the different destinations. Uh, and so when you pick a destination, that signal has to travel with you alongside your minecart from the origin to the destination. Like you, you can't just you know have a big long wire across thousands of blocks because the signal won't travel thousands of blocks. It only travels 128 blocks. Um, so then... You have to figure out how to uh, get the signal through. Okay, let me just think about this. One hundred and twenty-eight is max distance, but you can't do it max distance because you have to account for some inefficiencies. Because uh, you you need a structure to to hold the signal, which will be pistons. You need pistons to hold the signals, and then you also need. To accommodate for the fact that the train is moving, or the minecart is moving at speed. Hmm. Well, it means we build more stuff, although, once we figure out how the mechanism works, it's just gonna be modular, so. It won't be technically challenging, it just means that we have to build a lot of stuff. We have to build more infrastructure than I anticipated. That's all it means. Which is fine, I guess. The uh, although I must say the limitations in the game engine makes this more complicated than it needs to be, in my opinion. I mean, in my head, I imagine this thing to be less complicated than this. <laughs> uh, in my head, I imagine there'll be a lot fewer uh, switches for passing the, the signal forward. In fact, I've, I've considered that maybe it would be possible to just have a, uh, a switch at every junction. Which is already a lot of junctions, it's already like um, 25 junctions into the destinations plus, plus 10 junctions from the local loops to the regional loop, so it's already like 35 junctions. But no, no, now that, now that I find out that the uh, redstone only activates within a 64 block radius, there's gonna be a lot more switches. There'll be so many switches. Although in a way, um, it it makes the the multiplayer possibility of this system more con or like it, it suits a multiplayer version of this because. That means that if we do divide the network up into into zones so that multiple net multiple minecarts can travel on it at the same time, the the zone control system, like the zone will only be about a hundred blocks wide. 128 maximum, probably less. Again, I'm probably talking about things that I was thinking about it in my head, but I haven't demonstrated, so you don't know what I'm talking about. 
Should I should I explain? I should probably explain. Let me just uh one, two, three, four. Wait, what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Five, six. Okay, that's that's correct. So let me come out here. So imagine you want multiple minecarts. Imagine you have you know, imagine like between each of these redstone bits is is a zone. In the real world, they would have a train there, and for safety purposes, uh, if there is a train here, then this train cannot enter into this one. So, you know, like at the minimum, if you have a train there, you can't allow that train to enter this, zo this zone, otherwise the trains will crash and then everything will fall apart. But uh, in the real world, the train networks, the uh, real world trains will have one zone buffer because trains take a long time to, to slow down. So if there is a train here, the the signal or the, the, the train on the track will activate a signal to stop the train there so that when the train hits the signal, it will, it will lose power, like it will lose acceleration and it will just kind of slow down and brake and slow down. So before it reaches the next zone where the next train is, it'll, it'll stop. It'll come to a standstill there, and the trains then won't crash. So so this is how you have multiple trains on the same track, and not have them crash into each other all the time. Because if whenever if, if one if one zone of the track is occupied, then then two zones back, the the track will will stop the train, right? So. Uh, to convert this into uh, uh, something in Minecraft, if we want this system to work in a multiplayer map where there are multiple players possibly using the same minecart network at the same time, we will have to do a similar thing with zone control. So that if there's a player over here and, and the signal is passing alongside the train, so this, this, let's say this train is going to, to New York. Oh, but the other one is going to to Los Angeles, whatever it is. Then the signal for New York will be alongside this train, and the signal for Los Angeles will be alongside this train. Uh, and then we can't let that, for whatever reason, crash into that one, because otherwise the signals will get messed up, and also the trains will crash. So then, if there's a minecart there, there needs to be a system in this zone that catches the minecart and stops it, and then when that clears up, then reaccelerate this card to continue the journey. So zone control again in my, in Minecraft would have to function similarly to to the real world. So now back to the point where where redstone only travels uh, 128 blocks. The fact that the redstone only travels 128 blocks means that the signal is only going to be at most 128 blocks between between uh, one one switch to the other. And so the zones would naturally also be about 128 blocks, probably like 100 blocks, just to have some buffer. So if you have uh, a zone every 100 blocks, or you ha if you have to have a zone every 100 blocks, then then I guess you would use that as well for the uh, for the zone control so that you don't have the, the minecarts crashing into, into each other. So then every 100 blocks, you can have another player with a different destination on the same network. Traveling on the same network. Um, but we're not doing that. It's possible, but we're not doing that because it'll be, make things a lot more complicated. First of all, acceleration and deceleration in a minecart is complicated in, in Minecraft. So probably you would have to switch off into a loop. So, so if, if that zone is occupied, Oh wait, it doesn't work like that because it's 128. <laughs> uh, oh man! So if that if that is occupied, then then this train would have to go off into a loop and just go around in circles until this until this zone empties and then it'll go from the loop back onto the main track. Is what I'm thinking. But we're not we're not doing that. We're not doing zone control. We're not doing multiple 
players on the same network. But it's possible. I'm just saying it's possible. It's technically possible. But this is already complicated enough, so we're not doing it. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if that makes sense. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if I explained it in a way that makes it clear. In fact, maybe we can just look it up on Wikipedia. Alright, alright, so, so learning is more important than, than playing, right? So let me go and open a new window. Go to Wikipedia, train, track, control, railroad switch, railway signaling. Railway signaling, okay, full screen, transition, there you go. System used to direct railway traffic uh, to keep trains clear of each other at all times. Train moved on fixed rails, making them uniquely susceptible to collision. Uh, this susceptibility is exacerbated by the enormous weight and inertia of a train, which makes it difficult to quickly stop when encountering an obstacle. Okay, let's see how they... Block signaling, that's what they call it, not zone control. Block signaling is, is what they call Um... Entering and leaving a manually controlled block, permissive and absolute blocks, automatic block, fixed block. I mean, they describe it. There's, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no diagrams though. Hold on, moving block. Uh, it's probably too common. Automatic block signal. Railroad communication system that consists of a series of signals that divide a railway line into a series of sections or blocks. The uh, system controls the movement of trains between the blocks using automatic signals. Uh, basic operation, single direction ABS, bi-directional ABS, automatic traffic... Okay, well there's a lot of reading, there's no diagrams unfortunately. It would be nice to have a diagram. Signaling block systems. Maybe it's here. Nope. Timetable one train working. <laughs> I mean, token block. So, you know, before they were electronics, people literally used like tokens to tell you where you can go and where you can. So this there's like a, a hoop, and it, it's on a hoop because as the train goes past and you want to pass it to the next guy, you put it onto a hook as the train is traveling past. So the, the manual signaling systems is uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, elect radio electronic token block direct um, British absolute block signaling. Oh, here we go. Here's a here's a diagram. Down up distant home starter signal box A signal box B signal box C. Our train will be traveling in the up direction. Huh, interesting. <laughs> it's so complicated. There's no diagram. Interesting. Okay, there's no easy diagram, unfortunately. Alright. If you want to read about it, you can uh, go to block signaling. on Wikipedia and you can read all about train signaling. In the meantime, it doesn't really concern us here because we don't plan to have multiple minecarts on this track. Oh, it's a cave down here. Let me just... I... Let me just not fall down here. Let me just jump across this gap like it's nothing. Alright, great. I mean, it might be interesting to figure out. Maybe, maybe we can retrofit it after we finish the whole network. If I still feel like building more. 
it would be an interesting problem to solve in terms of just, you know, figuring out circuits and things. Figuring out how to make the, the network accommodate multiple minecarts at the same time. Might be interesting. But uh, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Let's, let's just build the, the one player, the single player network first. And then we'll think about maybe building a multiplayer network. I should double check this, shouldn't I? So we got one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, and that's the edge, alright, that's correct. <laughs> 